ribbon cutting shears. Ha ha! Lady came by, she's desperate. The ribbon cutting for some new business is today. And she had left these in the trunk of her car. They had rusted, they had gotten dull. Uh, she could not use them for this fancy photo op ribbon cutting. And so those were brought in to me to sharpen. So I'm going to show you two ways to sharpen them. If you are not uh, a scissor sharpener and you just need to get them to cut, you might, oh, well, I've been a sharpener, might use these, but um, you're going to use some diamond files, these little micro diamond files. Now I'm going to demonstrate how these shears cut to begin with. Um, and let's see if they cut at all. Yeah, they cut, so we, we don't have too much to go on it. So the diamond files come in. Uh, we sell them in three different grit. You can get them from our website. You can probably buy it from like a Bass Pro or some kind of any place that sells knives probably would sell these little diamonds files. These are DMT, but you see how I'm following the angle of the edge and going down. I'm not uh, square. I'm not square like right angles. I'm following the edge of it, and that will pull up a little bit of a burr. This is not the best way to sharpen, but it will do in an emergency. Kind of bring up an edge. Just make sure that you don't roll over the edge. That you're at the same angle as the edge on these shears. Then you can cut the burr off. Maybe you've created a little bit of burr cut with them. See how they cut? And these cut okay. But I think I can do a little bit better by using the Cymec. This is um, our sharpening machine we use mostly for beauty shears, convex edge shears. But you can also use it on these, <laughs> these large ribbon cutting shears. Now see the spatter guard comes off so now you can put a big giant scissor in here. Some of the flat hung machines, um, although they do a great job sharpening, the spatter guard won't come off. Now I'm putting on a 100 um, micron pad on a flat disc. Uh, the 100 or maybe the 400 grit are my two courses that we carry, but you want something fairly coarse, as coarse as you've got. And I'm just going to freehand it. I'm not putting it in my clamp. I'm just taking a look at what the angle is. So I have good lighting. I don't want my blade to touch the other side of the plate past the middle, so I'm only concentrating on the outside inch. You see, with the light, you can see what part is, is touching and my wheel is going in a clockwise direction. It's going away from the edge and I'm just pulling it across here, following the blade, following the angle. And it's such a wide angle it's not that hard to freehand these. Uh, if I had to guess, probably a 25 degree angle. Um, it's always blunter than you think. It might be 15. But I didn't have it in the clamp, so I don't know for sure. Wearing my Sharpener's Jam t-shirt. That's our event that we have every year um, for the sharpeners. Um, that was from the shirt from last year, and uh, which was our 22nd year of having the Sharpener's Jam. That's designed for people who sharpen in shears and those that want to get into sharpening. Now, my video channel is mostly about sharpening beauty shears, although I get into some things like this ribbon cutting scissor and clipper blades and um, who knows what might walk in the door. But uh, primarily we're looking at beauty shears. Now, you see how shiny that edge is? And that's what I'm looking for to see if it's shiny all the way down. Even though I'm using a coarse grit, now look at the one that I haven't sharpened. You can definitely tell the difference. So I really don't need my red sharpie to see where I've been on these because there's such a difference in the color or the, the smoothness of the steel once I've gone over it. <clears throat> I'm having a little bit of difficulty here keeping it straight. I think my pad's probably wearing down and it's feeling slick. You want to be a consistent angle all the way down for them to cut correctly. Pulling it across, uh, probably needs to be more blunt. Sometimes putting another hand on there, 
does two things. It keeps it steady, but it also you don't have to worry about the metal overheating because you would definitely burn your fingers before that metal turns blue. Okay, does it look like I've got it all the way down, all the way to the edge, little tiny burr? Yep, yep, looks pretty good. Double check the other side. I think I'm ready to cut the burr off. So, kind of get beyond the camera here, you're not really going to see it, but I'm cutting through a paper towel, and if you kind of look at my arms, I'm using pressure. <laughs> I'm, I'm pressing it down hard to cut that burr off. This is not like a test to see if it's cutting. This is actually using some side pressure to get that burr completely gone. So my next step is to address the rust on these shears. So I've got a couple of things I'm going to try for the rust. And the first one is the little ru um, rust eraser. And we sell these, they come from Japan. And I'm just kind of going over it with a rust eraser. And I'm using gloves now because I don't want to, uh, you know, if I get some chemicals on my hand, it's probably better not to. But, and these are pretty nasty, but hey, this is cleaning it up pretty good, isn't it? Look at that. How much better? Wow. If you don't have a rust eraser, sometimes just a regular um, eraser for a pencil will work almost as good, not quite as good. Um, this one's a little bit more aggressive, a um, little bit grittier than a regular pencil eraser. And I'm going around getting these things. Wow, big difference, isn't it? I think if this rust had pitted, had been on there longer, it would have been harder to get off. But this looked like this rust was uh, fairly recent. Now, this stuff I'm putting on is not coffee flavoring. <laughs> That's just the bottle I put it in. That is um, Evapo Rust and I put it in that bottle and I'm using it along with my rust eraser in conjunction. A lot of times things are synergistic. In other words, they work better together than the uh, 2 plus 2 equals 5 instead of 4 when you use some things together. Find that true when we go with our polishing. So I'm going in there with my rust eraser and the evapor rust and just giving it a good scrub. Now, the evapor rust we're going to have to rinse off afterwards. I can't leave it on there. Look what a mess it's leaving behind. I want to polish the front of the blade because that's what's going to be showing the most. I think this lady's going to be pretty happy with these shears when she gets them back. And I could have done the rust eraser, the rust removal first before I sharpen. It's kind of a matter of preference. But I'm taking care of these. They almost look like clown shears, don't they? Except these really cut. We've got some cardboard, giant cardboard shears that we use in our family photos a lot of times. It's sitting by our front door. Someone wants to pose with them, but uh, might be fun to just to Get us a big scissor like this and have it in. These are usually coming from Pakistan. They're not designed to do a lot of really good cutting, just kind of cut the ribbon. Most of the time when I see these ribbon cuttings, it, <laughs> the scissors don't always cut the ribbon. It just sort of pulls the ribbon off where it's taped on and then it all falls away. It's just for the ceremony. I'm going to speed through this thing because you don't really want to see all of the scrubbing that I'm doing. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And flying through. Now I'm rinsing them with water because you've got to put the water on it when you use that evapor rust and wipe it down good. Cleaning up my mess here. Now I'm, I'm going to dry it, and I'm putting um, some oil on it. That should help keep down the rust a little bit. This is some gun oil I happen to have, but you know, pretty much any oil you've got would do good in here. 
good wipe down so it's not greasy, hand it back to her. And let's do one last cut. This is an actual, this is a paper towel again. I'm going to do another cut. Oh, look how nice that cut through the paper towel. Let's try some cloth. I keep some felt cloth down here just for testing these type of shears. This felt's about as hard or thick as somebody's going to cut with it, unless they're cutting leather. Um, but this makes for a good test. Let's get a little piece of this blue felt cloth. And let's see how that cuts. Let's pretend like that's a ribbon. Oh, yep. I think this is going to be a good ribbon cutting shear. Look at that. I'm pretty happy with that. And what did it take me? 15 minutes. Not bad. <laughs> if you want to learn more about sharpening beauty shears, uh, take a look at my channel. I've got a lot of videos and we have training and well, it's a nice business to be into.